All right, uh, we have a Roba game going on this time. Let me post the link somewhere else. Whoa. Um, it looks like we have not done the draft yet. Grabbing the heroes there. So I have only played this game like once. Um, just gonna put that out as a disclaimer. So hopefully I remember all the rules and everything. Um, All right, it looks like we're gonna get a co-caster here. Oh, is that a one? Determining first player, I guess, 15. Looks like Kratos won. He's going to pick Big O. Um, oh, pulling those cards out. So this guy. That's the key shortcut to see the other side. I forget. Oh well. Uh, so this guy seems to be pretty popular. He's the only one who has four attack at, uh, at the start. Uh, Ichiro also, I think, is pretty popular. He has three attack and nine health, which is a lot of health. Um... So I think we're banning now. It looks like they tap to ban, maybe. So we have bans on uh, Corvus and Eos. Eos, one of those two. Um. Both of these are evokers. I know Corvus is... I think all the evokers are pretty... The only one I didn't see anyone playing was um, Iskandar on that stat sheet that Kratos made. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Good. Let me just... There we go. So what do we have here? Aki versus Kratos. <laughs> yep. So Kratos takes Bran as his evoker. That leaves Iskander as the only other evoker. So, oh, the two evokers got banned out. Okay. Yeah. So Kratos, I know, is a big fan of Vigo and likes a lot of decks that build around Vigo. Um, so knowing him and knowing how we're probably going to see uh, the Gauntlet come out pretty early. Um, so the gauntlet gives plus one attack all the time and an additional plus one attack when you're attacking a hero and you stick that on Vigo, it gives him the double double threat of one, he has uh, five attack for smashing conduits in a single attack and then also he goes to six when he's just attacking guys and what that means is that it basically turns into a pseudo card advantage 
because he's threatening so much damage right away that um, it just it relieves pressure on, on your hand to be able to produce powerful clashes because you're swinging for six. Like, if I swing for six, and you, got, you got an answer. You, a lot of the time, you don't even need to play anything at all. Yeah, for sure. So it seems like the strategy is to pick, like, um, a guy with big attack first and then the evoker second, maybe? It depends. It depends on on what you're aiming for, what your your plan is. Generally speaking, sort of the consensus metagame is um, Ichiro and uh, Corvus as first picks or as first bans, but it gets a bit more complicated than that when you have people who know the card pool pretty well, which both of these guys do, because they've both been playtesters for the game. Mm. Um, so different heroes take on different priorities when you know what it is your opponent is trying to set up or what you think they're planning. In a vacuum, I mean, both both guys here have drafted pretty pretty good decks with good options. Um, I would say, honestly, I wouldn't give the edge to either deck just based on composition. It depends on on information we don't have as well, because obviously they both have hidden a hidden deity, right? So with with Iskander on Aki's side, he's gonna want, want to take advantage of Arcane Evocation is probably Iskander's most important card. That's a a talent ability that you spend your whole turn to gain five power, um, which gives gives you phenomenal resource acceleration. And it's just a question then of how he wants to spend that. So because he doesn't have any huge power costs on his board, like he doesn't have a Mado that he wants to level up early or something like that, I expect we're going to see some big items, either a Spark or a Lotus Flower. Yeah, so they're still picking their items, I think. Looks like Kratos has 10 cards there that he's looking at, so. Just making notes in the chat of everything that happened, it looks like, as well. Uh, cool. Yeah, Corvus and Eos band. So I don't think we're going to see a Wrath Lord based on the drafts here, but um, having having planted that flag in the ground now, obviously setting myself up to be wrong. But um, I mean, e either of them could, but I don't see, I don't see the, the drafts really feeding into it super clearly this time. Hmm. So... Uh, one thing I'm kind of wondering, I'm still pretty new to this game. I've only played like once. Um, for the div Divine Conduits, do people generally just place those randomly or? No. Um, generally speaking, and it depends on which deity you're playing, but a lot of the time what you'll see is people will um, have one that they want to burst early, and most commonly that is the gain two power. People want to see that flip early, so a lot of the time you'll see them deploy in such a way as to leave that one as the most exposed and funnel people into attacking that first. Okay. Um, where you'll see that diverge is people who play the Wrath Lord um, really want to see that plus two attack, the permanent plus two attack buff as right. early as possible. So a lot of the time they're, they'll actually go as far as to leave that one completely exposed um, and only defend the other two. Um, beyond that, uh, Smite is often really, really powerful in, in like the middle of the game when people have a bit of damage on them and you can kill someone out of sequence. That can be a really, really um, significant tempo shift. So people don't want that to go too early. Mm. And then the... Um, Last of all, you have the the commit or recover, which is actually weirdly 
most useful in the late game because it um it's a good way of tapping out blockers when you're trying to trying to to, to finish your closeout. Yeah, so Kratos is gonna get an instant break on Nature's Bounty. And that's gonna... And that's cool, that's great for him because that, that has actually whiffed now completely because all of Aki's guys are ready and all of Kratos these guys are committed, so there's well, no value in it. It did actually commit, uh, Bran. He was still ready. Oh yes, sorry, because that's why that's why he's committed. Okay, that's why everyone's committed. Yep, I'm with it. <laughs> yeah. And we have a miss trigger from Kratos there. Yeah. Uh, forgot to activate Bran's heal. Unfortunate. It's one of those things you see on tabletop simulator all the time. People make these little technical mistakes that you that they don't make playing with actual physical cards. I feel like. Playing in a digital environment that doesn't automate things tends to have that effect on people. Yeah, I know so, it has that effect on me. Yeah, so it looks like Itosha is attacking. Is that how you pronounce it, by the way? I uh, yeah, Itotia is attacking Bran. Yeah, her her explosive potential to do a ton of damage right up front. Ooh. I got booted. Yeah, so he's clashing two cards, which is what her ability allows her to yeah. do. And we see a plus two, plus two, and the plus one, plus one that also adds attack for each other card clash. So that's going to yeah. knock out Bran. So yeah, her, her potential. For, did, did Bran clash anything on defense? No, he did not. Yeah, that's, that's the smart play there, I think. Yeah. All right, I'll be right back in. And it looks like he's also going to break this conduit on the other side. That is the gain two power one. So Kratos going up to four power. And Ake also up to four power. And then it looks like he's going to level up. Yeah, he levels up Ichiro. So that's mainly for the ability, it looks like. He only gets plus one health. Uh, yeah, the, the, the ability he gets is um, very powerful. Yeah. So we may see um, we may see Vigo level. Vigo is actually like Vigo to flip the Chiro is important because the plus three armor he gets when he's leveled um, makes it a much safer proposition for him to attack into each because each is ready when you're attacking him always. So having having that plus three armor negates the the extra damage you're taking mm -hmm. um, from attacking into a ready hero. So that was it for Ake's turn, and Kratos doesn't have an evoker right now, so we'll get that extra power. So it'd be interesting to see with with Vigo, you kind of want to. He's a bit odd compared to others. A lot of the time, you want to prioritize putting an item on him before, because you get him to that five attack faster so yeah i think kratos is making the right play here um going oh he's not attacking though i probably would have attacked it there but um saving his power for the item makes more sense because it, it just it puts a lot more pressure on a key when you have a hero who can who can solo conduits with a single attack and yeah there's the gauntlet so now Vigo becomes a lot a lot scarier on offense. Yeah, that's a pretty good combination there. There's there's debate over whether the the gauntlet or the staff is the the archdruid staff is the other item you see played on Vigo a lot of the time, and that's more of a 
slightly less aggressive and kind of more of a value focused way of building um because it comes with the plus one hit points and it gives him the evoker trait um but but either like good it's just a question of what you're prioritizing and what your what the rest of your team is and what kind of the the, the overall strategy with your composition is right Kratos is a more aggressive player so he prefers the gauntlet so we see a ready here and two more actions What's he going to do? He's going to move, maybe? He doesn't have a lot of great options here. Um, ready, move, move. Yeah, kind of like there wasn't a lot proactive he could do this turn because of the two blockers on the conduits and swinging into Octavian a lot of the time can feel like a waste. Uh, Itotia is pretty much the only character who can swing into Octavian with, and have a decent chance of of killing him. But uh, again, it depends on what cards you have in hand and, and what you have. So I think going for a more conservative turn here. This actually, this is an example of a turn where it would have been great to play Arcane Evocation. Like we, we don't have a lot else going on. Have any specific agenda that you are looking to advance that turn, and you can just use it to really ramp up your resources and that that can be a great way to spend those turns where your opponent has set up a difficult kind of situation for you and it can be a great way to gain value wise that value would yeah I'm but i guess gonna... he didn't have one i need to open up the the rules is that something you can do? I've seen them like move a character and ready in one action. It seems like uh, no one 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 action each. So ready recover is one action is one action. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, There's, she, there are there are there are free recover effects in the game. So like Octavian recovers for free at the right. start of the turn if you block that kind of thing. Um, I think I think I might have just I think she was so, already uh, ready. Yeah, she a a key's turn was he recovered. Moved Itotia to the middle and then moved each rook to the middle. Right. Uh, very, I'd be very surprised if we didn't see Kratos immediately smash that conduit on the right there. Yeah. Yep, that is yeah. what he's going to do. Let's see what it is. Gain two power. And then he's going to ready. His evoker is dead, otherwise he'd have been able to level up. And So Vigo's just a wrecking ball now. He's going to be stomping around. And then he's going to, oh, really aggressive revive there. I really like that. Yeah, he's going to be over max hand size now, right? Uh, seven is the hand, so I think so. Yeah, yeah so I'll have to discard one. A lot of the time you'll see people holding out for the the max value on those conduit conduit resurrect but i think um i mean that one wasn't under any serious threat he didn't need to pop it there but i think a lot of the time if you can there is value in being more organized whether or not it was the right decision here i guess we'll find out certainly he, he's built a very solid and intimidating his remaining conduit Okay, it looks like he's attacking, and Octavian's going to block. Uh, 
And Ichiro is doing the clash. That's interesting. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's why. Okay. So that'll be plus five attack. For a total of eight, 11, minus three. So Kratos can potentially save here with um, a three armor card. if he has it he's got a very full hand so i'd be surprised if he didn't but yeah it, it maybe it, it may be a domination you don't want to play domination on defense a lot of the times you can avoid it the question is how much how much does he value two cards in hand versus keeping his octavian in play i think yeah there we go is that enough i think that's, that's five enough, armor yeah, yeah so he'll take six damage to be okay yeah one right, with with bran in play that's basically fine. Trying to get the tokens out of the bags. There we go. Roll tabletop simulator. Okay, so that was... Only action one here, I think, right? That was... Yes, that's right. So... So you can recover Itotia and swing again, which you wouldn't have been able to do except for the fact that he had the Itotia. So do you just attack the Octavian here, or...? Uh, uh, no, um, well, maybe he does. Actually, yeah, because he wants to... Is each row ready? Then that makes sense. That's yeah. The question is that's that's a more it's a more conservative play, and it's not a bad one. Um, the alternative would have been to to double swing for the conduit again, and uh, try and take out Ego or Bran, which would have been acceptable as well. Yeah. How wants to go about this? This is a good like a lot of the action is going to be focused in the center lane for Wana, so keeping each row up. Um, and giving yourself that security blanket is not is not unwise by any stretch. Yeah. Okay. So looks like he might just. Oh, he's going! Jesus, he's going all in. <laughs> That's crazy overkill. There's one hit point left. Yeah. Uh, so that's why. So blazing spirit. Um. Doesn't like it because you can play it again from the bin. Doesn't cost us. In terms of resources, you know that's that's something that he has now in the bank. And then the unravel is something you want to get into your bin as fast as possible. So he wasn't playing the, for the stats there; he was just playing it to to get it out. Yeah, that makes sense. And big pile of cash on a thorn face. So I said. That's going to make that each row a... Yeah. <laughs> He's a big, strong boy. Very, very difficult to kill now. Okay, he has actually left his third conduit badly exposed here. Kratos can Vigo and blow it up. Mm -hmm. Uh... That would mean leaving his his own middle conduit kind of exposed, but it's not not necessarily a catastrophe. Uh, depending on what deity he's playing now, actually, there's some interesting stuff. Like if he's playing the judge, he can move, attack, blow up that conduit, can manifest the judge, kill that hugely invested Ichiro. And your man has, or Aki has no revives left to bring him back, and he has no mana for buyback. So if, if Kratos is playing the judge here, Aki's in a really bad spot. Or if he's playing the judge and has the stones to early mana, which he may not. Um, oh, there's the smite, takes out Vigo. 
Um, and he could be playing the judge because we haven't seen his middle conduit yet. Oracle for Aki, that's good timing because he's low on card. Yeah. And then third action. Yeah, so what do you do now? If I, it depends on what, um, like, do you just do you just use your last conduit to get Octavian back, and then um, you've almost got um that conduit. Is it going next turn? I go to you. Committed. No, oh, that conduit, and get uh, a double resurrect next turn. But it would mean you're doing literally nothing next turn except mana. Uh, uh, it depends on who he wants to keep around. Yeah. Because like one of the, one of the nice things about the evoker staff on Vigo is that because you're investing in him anyway, you want to keep him around, and by Moving effectively, moving your evoker trait over to him, it means that in the late game you have the freedom to banish your evoker um, and keep your invested character around and still have access to that power trickle from evoker. Yeah, it looks like he's still thinking he has one action left, but I don't know. I'd love to know what daddy is playing. Yeah. Uh, I guess the fact that he hasn't like snap manifested the judge says maybe to me that he's not running the judge in that case. Running, he must either running the judge or uh, he is not running the wrath lord. He might be running the judge or he might be running the other one, the monarchs. No, but this deck he's not running the monarch. He is. Yeah, there it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And that, that maker for for Aki, like that's that's almost the perfect the perfect judge manifest there, smashing the third conduit and taking out this. This is only leveled up character for for ultimates. Obviously, the R complete complete. I guess he has the power to level out to TN now as well, but that's um that puts Kratos in a really strong position. Now, with with the, the deity, it means he does have access to a evoker, but he's going to need two full turns to to ramp up to that five that he needs for his body. Yeah. So. So, uh, Kratos definitely he has a window. So at this point in the game, when both of the de deities are manifested, I guess, but I, I don't know, like at this point... Oh my god, he's foregoing buyback, Jesus. Oh wow. The stone's on this guy. <laughs> uh, and he's got a Tsukidashi. Okay. So he's going to run away? No, he's going to sneak oh. Bran off, and he's oh. going to try okay. all in the deity. I see. Kratos has seen a fair chunk of his deck. He's got... Oh, no, he's only seen 10 cards. That doesn't seem right. But uh, he's, he's, he's already... He's pre-flipped <laughs> face down before your man's even played anything. But uh, now he does need to draw the Aegis out, so this isn't bad. Also, kind of the obvious play. Oh, he's not good. 
So either he doesn't have the Aegis or he's told and no way of knowing which uh, he has three, three Tsukidashis versus Kratos only has one and it's probably almost certainly going to be especially as her ult is gone so that's certainly going to be enough to see him through this attack whatever um, second card might come down but the danger of course is that because Aetotia gets Clash her extra card at the very end. Um, Krynos has to make a, a decision in the dark here. He's going for 10,000 drills. I, I expect he's just loading up on armor here. Yeah, he's at five right now. So he's taking one damage. If he gains two armor, he's taking negative one damage. But he's so potentially then, going up to seven armor from that ten thousand drills. We don't know. Yeah, yeah. Blaze of Fear comes back, so that's a that's a ton of damage coming out too. Three, so four, extra... five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten damage. He's taking three. And Krytos is so seven. Yeah. And how many cards does he have left after that? Four. Yeah. Okay. That was this was a very aggressive turn. Like yeah. um, I I wonder does that mean Dashi just because um to go that aggressive like knowing you might not get the implies that you have a a second step maybe or maybe he was just hoping he'd get it I don't I don't think with the cards he had that he you look at that hand and go yeah I can definitely get it. so that maybe means that he he still has to work Worry, um, the Aegis might be out there, and like from from Kratos's perspective, he survived one of three Suki Dash. Now with with, with Iskander, oh Iskander's dead though, or he's gone. In fact, is he? Yeah, he's banished. So, with only nineteen cards seen, you know he'll have filtered a bit. You'll expect to see the second Suki Dashi in the game. Might not see the third. And if he can if he can weather that, then he's in um, a good position. And he's got five power for buyback now, which is he can hold on to that conduit another turn. He really wants to try and heal the judge a bit if he gets the judge committed without risking taking too much damage. But of course, now that Isotia is leveled up, she has the capacity to play double cards yeah. on defense as well as on attack. So maybe you just try and wait for Vigo to come back. Again, as as ever, it comes down to what he has. So uh, Ran and his team, his isolation card is Nature's Wrath, which doesn't do him in the current situation. Um. Yeah, he's gonna move Bran in as a blocker. He's gonna. You could almost split them up here. You could move the judge one more over, leave Bran in the middle, and revive Vigo, and that gives you security from Zuki Dashi. But uh, he is not opting for that, and he's going for the Mass Resurrect. So I expect we're gonna see Bran get banished here. Uh... No, maybe not. And he's going. Is he going shopping? Yeah, that he's was gonna good. buy an item, I think. What items? Yeah. Is five. Okay. The the infusion, so ah. that gets the damage off his gut. Yep. So with the we can Sukidashi one recover and team attack. So he's safe from any Sukidashi alpha strikes because both the heroes are committed. Um. Which buys him some time, although obviously he's in a. Well, if if you discount the danger of getting and lathered in a dark corner, um, he's in a very commanding position here. That infusion, that infusion has basically negated Aki's entire previous turn. Yeah. 
But the pair still have an evoker. Oh, what's this? That's that's the evocation. So uh, that's where yeah. the, the buyback. Alright, so and he's going to get his Ichiro each. back. But Ichiro is not protected from from Nature's Wrath, so he can still be tapped out by that brand card. Now, if I'm Kratos here, I act, my turn is to uh, take out Aizutia. Yeah, for sure. Especially when I have a buyback left and he doesn't. Yeah, like once, once that's dead, it's just three to two. And she, but she's also your, like, she's the card with the capacity to turn a Suki Dashi into a, a guaranteed kill. Right. And by taking her out, it it also it doesn't negate the threat of Suki Dashi. Get a, a base seven team attack from the other two, to make it a lot safer. It does take that that threat off the board somewhat. Minimizes it at least. So this is like a huge attack. Yeah, I really like not including Bran here. Like the judge is tough; he'll be able to survive. He might, he may wind up taking a bit of damage, but even if he does, he'll be able to heal some of it with Bran. Um. And I actually, we will probably we may see a, a plus two plus two card coming out here. Or, no, maybe not. But um, by keeping Bran out of it, because Bran could potentially get um, dragon punched, yeah, and blown up. The other two both have the. Well, actually, Vigo Vigo isn't leveled up yet either, so he's he is equally vulnerable to that. But yeah, that's why he got a bit of armor just in case. So we've got a flowing stance here, which will presumably see Judge get uh, chucked over to uh, the lane with the other two guys. And we're st we are having a kill, right? Because Vigo starting on 8, 9, 10, minus 3. So yeah, she's super dead. Yeah. Although there's a second card. No, she she could play. No, because she's got 3 damage on her own and 7 hit points. So even if he has another 3 armor card, I think that's not going to be enough. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven, and she has. Yeah, she needs like five more armor, I think. And we know he's already played her ultimate, so we're not going to see that. Yeah. Oh, again, um, each rose ultimate now, Living Shrine. And and might even if I had it, I'd probably play it here. But that would see her through. No, it's not the strongest stance. More judo. All right, so he's gonna move some people. That's nice the team up that way. It's good. We're going to see her come off the board. We'll see Kratos get paid. And now he has two actions left. Uh, yes, I think so. So we'll certainly see the judge bailing. So he, how many cards do you have in hand? Four. Because we saw him clash in Nature's Wrath, just I expect that means that at least one of those cards is a second Nature's Wrath. Um, he does need to be a little wary of Sugi Dashi here. Seven ten coming in. Probably be safe enough, but.
So Aki has a he's in a tough spot now in terms of how he wants to play this turn. That's yeah, he wants to take the center for sure, and then Stasis lovely. So we're gonna see Bran get tapped down by Stasis here. I expect. Seems good. Yeah, that was pretty from from the position he's in. Solid, solid turn there for Ricky, and he's going shopping, and big shield for the god. Okay. What does Vanguard do again? Uh, in a team attack, the the Vanguard is the one who takes the damage. Ah. There's five. Oh, buyback. Five. Third item, what might it be? I don't think. See it buyback at this point is too important. So, or not. <laughs> um, although. We we may even if he did we may not see it this turn because he's not gonna he's not, not gonna kill the oracle with just the judge so we're gonna see Vigo yeah though stalling out like this oh he's leveling Vigo okay yeah giving up the buyback for now but um stalling out like this is risky because of Suki Dashi like that kind of turtling up can be punished now it's possible if he's doing it this way it's possible it means that um he's got the Aegis in hand and feels with the the danger of being sukidashis yeah so Vigo... so the, the question the question for Aki now is uh, he has to ask himself did did Kratos Sukidashi, which people can do or is he is he representing very strongly that he has the Aegis? Because if he has the Suki Dashi, it's going to get punished. Yeah, so he's playing it smart in that regard. Because if you if you spend one action to move, one action to Suki Dashi, and then team attack, that's your full turn. If you hit the Aegis, you're now tapped out. There, and he gets to move another guy in and. Um, Probably, probably end the game at that point. Yeah. Um. So he's attacking Bran here, and this is his third action. But uh, Kratos can only attack Ichiro. So. But if he's got if he's got a Nature's Wrath here, um, he can. Nature's Wrath is his first action. The judge will stay standing because he's divine. Recover Vigo as his second action. Team attack is his third. Now he'd be singing for nine, and the Oracle has three armor now. So it's not a guaranteed kill unless it's just it's just it's just not a guaranteed um Vigo's overkill could potentially put him over the top, but with Octavian well, actually, with the uh, 10,000 drills in the deck, in Vigo's deck, we haven't seen any domination actually, now that I think about it. So the, oh, the potential for overkill to hit a big number is, is there. But uh, overkill, obviously, is, is a little bit unreliable. So he could go in and hope for the best with it and get the kill, or he could, he could win, and then he'd be in a very bad position. But again, if he has the Aegis, maybe not. So 2-2 two, two and a 3... So six damage. So Bran will be on two health. And Oracle blocks. So if he has that second nature's wrath, how much damage he needs to do? Eight plus three, eleven. 
He needs to be swinging for like 14, 15 to be sure of the kill. He'd have six, seven, eight, nine. So yeah, only overkill could do it. I might not do this. Yeah. So he's weighing up his options here. Looks like he is attacking Ichiro. Just Vigo, Vigo gives him that option. Yeah. Yeah. That's the that's the, the the conservative line here. He has advantage and he has brand to give the heals and he has access to buyback. Yeah. That uh, he could probably afford to just meat grind it out this way. It's not the flashy play, but it's probably the smart play. Yeah, seems fine. Blazing Spirit. And, and Cleave. Cleave. The Cleave's not doing anything here. Just plus two attack. Yeah. The Oracle's got so much armor. So he's doing eight, one, eight, one armor, so seven. Perfectly respectable, but he's taking um, four back. Yep. So you can heal one, he'll be at three damage. Well, he's going to evoke now at the start of the turn. He could potentially level up Bran if you wanted. I don't know that I would. Um, oh no, sorry, I'm, I'm mixing, I'm getting mixed up now, sorry. And he's just recovering and attacking. Yep. No blood run, no, just, just showing up for the fences. And I'd expect to see a domination here if he has one. I, certainly if I had a domination, I'd play it because we want to make sure if he survives. Yeah, there it is. Ooh, hard appetite, good card. So he's taking no damage back, and he's hitting for nine. Eight, Twelve, so that will kill him. Eleven, I think. Is that exactly killing him? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine attack, and then two armor. Two armor seven damage. So yeah, that's exactly yeah, killing. Yeah. All right, and he has his buyback now. So, noteworthy, we were discussing earlier the difference in Staff Vigo and Gauntlet Vigo. Staff Vigo wouldn't have got that kill. Yeah. Each row would be up for another full time. That's uh, significant. For sure. He's, it seems like he's looking at his items. He'd be mad to find him <laughs> at the moment. Mad. Yeah. I'm not going to do it, it looks like. Um, so just the Oracle left now. Yeah, so this is we're going to see a handshake or a, an elbow bump, as the case may be, in these troubling times. Um, yeah. Pretty quickly, I think. Well, yeah. I mean, these guys are a bit beat up. 
<laughs> and he's only he's only got two cards in hand. Yeah, this game this game is uh, a done deal, I think. Uh, but he's gonna swing for it anyway. Why not? Yeah, Bran is an easy target here, I guess. Yeah, and he is not blocking. I mean, he totally could. He totally could block the the jump. Um, there's nothing in Aki's deck which is going to produce like a huge spike of damage. Yeah, there we go. That he and he can heal Bran, and if you can heal with Bran. He might have an invigorate. This is a yeah. So five minus four. He's taking one damage. Yep. And we'll probably see the, the big team attack now. What happened? Okay. Oh, it looks like everyone just got kicked out. <laughs> oh, interesting. I their servers must be fucking melting at the moment with uh, the whole world online playing digital games. But that that game was over. There was a clear, clear result. Yeah, yeah. It's fun about that one. All right, well, thank you for hosting this stream. And uh, it was a pleasure doing the cast. Yeah, thanks for joining me. We have uh, winner, Kratos, the winner there. He yep. wasn't official when the servers went down. But... Uh, if, if we don't see a, a concession from Nagy, I'd be very surprised. Anyway, yeah. um, good to talk to you. Take care. Yep. All right. So that's going to be it, I guess. Um, good game. And hopefully we can stream some more of those in the future. Still kind of learning all of the cards and what they do. But yeah, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.